So it turns out this hotel room's not that bad looking. You can actually shoot quite a video here. Actually, a few people I know live here. Not me, I'm visiting. But they let me use the room for a little bit. We just watched Godzilla King of the Monsters. And I was gonna originally do this audio format as I usually do, but I decided to take it to video because I thought, you know what, the lighting's not so bad. So there's a burst in the background. Who cares? I've been excited for this film ever since the first Comic-Con trailer dropped. Do you remember that trailer? Claire de Lune playing in the background? It was so amazing, it was so well edited, and I have been saying this since day one. The marketing team for this film honestly deserves a raise. It's amazing. The amount of detail and intricacy that has gone into some of the edits of this entire marketing campaign Phenomenal. And it looks gorgeous. It all looked amazing. And I was pumped out of my mind to see this film. I was a fan of the first Godzilla film, which was of this MonsterVerse series. I wanted to see what they would do next. I really liked what Gareth Edwards did. I have my issues with that film. I did think that Godzilla wasn't in it as much as he could have been. This film definitely remedies that, but we'll get into that later. This film takes place five years after the events of San Francisco in that first film. After the devastation that took place, the Monarch Corporation is being put into question because the idea of having these monsters going around causing all kinds of damage is a really, really bad idea, it turns out. And the government is like, no, we don't want this anymore because this is really crazy and now we know that these monsters exist when we can see the damage that they've caused and people are not okay with it. At this time, no spoilers, due to certain events transpiring, King Ghidorah suddenly awake, is awake again and he was causing havoc all across the globe and there are other kaijus now coming into play and the only one who can stop him is Godzilla who has now reawoken and re-risen to basically duke it out with him. And that's essentially the plot of this film, or at least that's the part I'm telling you. There are parts I'm not telling you, which even the trailers don't really go into. I'm gonna start with the positives I have of this film. The special effects are jaw-dropping. Every single shot in this film, whenever there's a monster on screen, except for a few shots, they look very realistic. It's very photoreal. You can see every detail on Godzilla's like skin, which is just Phenomenal like when when you see things like that you just admire how much CGI how far it has come and it's it's really amazing to withhold behold. And I really think that they outdid themselves in a few sequences here. The cinematography for the most part is also beautiful. There are shots which are worthy of wallpapers for generations to come. There are Yeah, I've shared them on Twitter a few of them as well. There's it's a gorgeous looking film It is it really is and technically Just that just that aspect of it is worth going to the cinema for. The score by Bear McCreary is also phenomenal. It brings back original themes, like original Godzilla theme is in this, which I was really happy to hear. And the film definitely has a lot more Godzilla. Like I said, that was something I'll get to. And yeah, they definitely listened to that complaint that the fans had, and they doubled down on his screen time in this film. You definitely get a lot more of him. The action sequences, once Ghidorah and Godzilla go face to face and they just clash against one another and you see other uh, kaiju get involved in the mix as well. Absolutely brilliant. And really, on a production scale, this is a stunningly good movie. I mean, it, it's great. And also, um, I mean, I, I just recommend seeing this in IMAX. I think it's worth the money. Just see it for the visuals. It's just gorgeous to look at. But visuals don't often make a good movie, do they? Or nor do action scenes, even if it's stuff that the fans have wanted. And that way, Godzilla, King of the Monsters, becomes two things. Either you can approach this film as a straightforward, rock'em sock'em monster movie, and in that case, you're gonna love the hell out of this film. I mean, it's fucking great, some of these sequences. But if you're someone who is looking for something more intricate, you're gonna have some issues, because all the human stuff in this film is awful. There are so many points in this film where characters make decisions or there are dialogues which I couldn't believe what I was hearing when I was saying that there are some events that transpire between the time that uh, you know the events of San Francisco happen and Ghidorah awakening and the whole Roy battle royale starting those events are insane they're ludicrous I, I, I they're ridiculous I'm sorry but I, I have act, I actually audibly in the theater this gigantic IMAX theater which was completely sold out full of Godzilla fans my first reaction was you've got to be kidding me this this is the plot 
this is how we're gonna get this big battle and this is how we're setting up the future of the monsterverse so you gotta understand that there is a decision they make and that's going to be the stepping stone to everything that's going to happen from now on. Which I think is absolutely ridiculous. Like, that's the decision they went with? That's what they wanted to follow? I don't quite understand that. I really don't. Also, the humans in this film are very expository. There, there's, a lot, there's a lot of exposition. There's even a scene in this film where something happens. And you see the aftermath of that and you're meeting um, a new character that's introduced who has been given this quick briefing of it. They sort of cut past it, they give you like a you know quick realization of it and what's going on. But again, the plot's being explained in that and you're like, okay, lots happened in five years. But then they go to this other place where they're meeting up with forces to counter this. And the dialogue starts off with, as you know, this happened yesterday. It's like, yeah, we know. And I'm assuming they know too, like why are you debriefing everyone again? You just debriefed everyone and we're going through this entire thing again. Like, I mean, do you not trust us to remember what we just saw 15 minutes ago? I get that there are people in the film who may need some explanations, but do they really need explanations? I mean, you can just simply, simply go ahead with it. And this also leads a problem because there are certain characters who are given arcs and you just don't care for them because it's it's so focused on telling this explaining you know explaining the story millie bobby brown is probably the best actress in this film considering there are top-notch actors involved like kyle chandler vera farmiga ken watanabe bradley whitford these are amazing actors and thomas middleditch and i just i was surprised that you know like none of them are actually given like a memorable moment the only reason I actually remember Millie Bobby Brown's name in this film, Madison, is because half the dialogue for Vera Farmiga and Kyle Chandler is yelling, Madison, 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 Madison. And it's also disappointing because they try to introduce something about Millie Bobby Brown's character, Madison, and they don't really go into it as much, which is kind of sad because it seems like an emotional depth part that could really be focused on and they choose not to do it, and that kind of disappointed me. I think that there was a huge missed opportunity on that part. That being said, there is enough to enjoy in this film, but the film script, the story, and some of these decisions that are made, they really tank this film at several points. And I, I really can't stress that it's it, it's really ridiculous some of the decisions they make. Like I can't believe that this is what they've come up with in a way after all of this time. And if, honestly, if it wasn't for the technical brilliance on display, this movie would get a far lower rating than I'm about to give it, which I don't want to give it this, late, uh, this rating. The rating I'm about to give it, I wanted to give it a higher rating than that, but unfortunately, yeah. I'm going to give Godzilla King of the Monsters a 6.5 out of 10. The first one is a lot better. Even though it had less Godzilla, it was better. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Look forward to more videos very soon. As always, if you like this, please do subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the movies.